So hello, in today's video, we're going to be learning about the number system. So the number system chapter will be very much required for three syllabuses. So let me go ahead and write those down. So number system will be required for the syllabus 2210. That's the O levels. 0478. That's IGCSE. And the 9810 syllabus. Oh, I think it was 9816. Sorry. So the 9816 syllabus, that is the A levels. So without any further ado, let's get started. So we're going to have to learn about number systems. We need to first understand how computers represent data, represent numbers. So in general, computers cannot understand numbers or data according to humans or just like humans. They understand these data and numbers very differently. So computers have one main way of understanding data. And I, I'm sure everyone has learned it in their O-levels. If you had computer science, if you're seeing this video for A-levels and for O-level students, most of you should know that computer represents one number system. That is the binary number. So the binary number system. So computers definitely depend on the binary number system. So yes, so what is the binary number system and how does it work? Well, so binary number systems work using two values. So it works using two values. So I'm going to give you the first definition, like the basics, and I'm just going to give you the points on what binary numbers are, and then you're going to go into depth with the syllabus and understanding how they actually work. They're represented with two values, and I guess most of you already know those values. That's 1 and 0. It's a base 2 number system, and you're going to go into depth uh, just in a while. They are stored in binary registers. So let's first understand these two values. Okay, let's go and take a look into depth what these two values are. So computers basically understand one thing, either the value on, which is represented with one, or either the value off, which is represented by a zero. Now this on can be represented with true, uh, on, then let's say we have um, active, then what else? So true, on, active, so it's like true, false, so off will be the opposite. It's going to be false, off, uh, non-active, or deactive, you can say that to be anything. So basically on values means values that are true values that are on. That means the computer is able to read and understand that value. So this on value may turn on components into the computer. It may represent data values and etc. So about data values, we're going to understand in a bit. And in terms of components, it's a different part of the syllabus named logic gates, which we're going to take a look uh, in a separate video. Uh, the off can be represented by once again, the values false, off, deactive, or whatever the English equivalent of off is. So it's going to be represented by a zero. This is how the computer basically understands which component to work with, what values to work with. This is the basic understanding of the computer. Now let's go ahead and understand what is a base two number system. So suppose we say we have a binary number, uh, let's say a four digit binary number, one, zero, zero, one. What does this actually mean in terms of uh, human knowledge? How can we interpret what the computer is thinking. Let's say the computer outputs a value 1001. In very early days, computers needed to be in binary mode and stuff like that. So let's say the computer output the value 1001, or basically uh, someone is storing the value 1001 in the computer register. So what does the value 1001 actually even mean? Well, 
to convert this into human readable form. So for now, this does have a specific name. So for now, we're just gonna call it human read able form. So how do we work out these values? Well, each number, okay? So we call each number or each binary digit has a base two representation. So what do we mean by this? So first, I'm going to draw a box, okay? I'm gonna draw a box, and let's separate this out into four uh, parts, okay? And let's write this in. So we separate it out. So once we put these into these uh, boxes, we start, we start by putting the values two underneath the value and then we start with zero one two three so make sure to remember always starts with a zero so what's the value to the power of zero one two four eight okay so one two four eight so let me first go ahead and write this with a different color. Eight, four, two, one. Okay, so now remember that we talked about the value one. One means, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. So remember the value one means on, on. And we talked about that the value zero means off, off. So how can we represent this binary number into something that we can read? Well, we take the values that are on and we reject the values that are off. So we take these two values, which is eight, plus one, we add it. Now, remember, one more thing to keep in mind that these values, this two to the power zero, two to the power one, two to the power two, two to the power three, these values right here, these will always be from the left, sorry, this will always be from the right to left and then we're just going to randomly take eight and one which is nine so therefore we can say that zero one uh, one zero zero one represents the value nine so this is binary and this is a number nine that we understand and generally when we're talking with someone we're having a conversation with someone we would say that okay the value is nine you have to buy nine eggs you have to buy something that's related to nine you have to work with the number nine in the maths so this computer is going to be reading the value as one zero zero one whereas we will be reading the value nine so this is actually called a decimal slash denary number and you're going to talk about denary numbers and decimal numbers in just a bit now let's come back to this area, okay? Let's have a look at this once again. So we place these binary numbers in, in, in the box, right? In this box, inside the box. So what is this box? Let's say we have a bigger binary number. Okay, this is pretty big. So how will the computer, how, Will the computer store this value? Well, it's very simple. We are going to again draw a box. Okay, we're going to be representing how the computer stores this binary number. Okay, I don't know why the box didn't form. But let's go ahead and draw a box. Okay, I guess it's big enough.
So I, I think I can't feel, fit in the full binary digit, but let's go and try to fill out the whole thing. So it's a good practice whenever you're writing the binary numbers to write it from, once again, the right to left. So whenever you're writing the binary values, okay? So again, this is represented in a box. So suppose we don't have these digits this time. Okay, I'm going to erase it. So what are these boxes that this computer is storing? So remember, we talked about a point that they're stored in binary registers. Remember this point? They're stored in binary registers. Well, this box is represented as a binary register. And then remember, we assign the numbers of 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power 4, 2 to the power 5, 6, and 7. All because it's a base 2 number. These are known as place holders slash weightings. You can either call them weightings, you can either call them placeholders. Both work just the same. So either weightings or placeholders. And again, if you want to calculate the denary number or decimal number, which the human can read, because in an instance, if a human looks at this number, they cannot easily recognize it. So how can we read this binary number? Well, we're going to be once again assigning the numbers. 2 to the power 0 is 1, 2 to the power 1 is 2, then 4, 8, uh, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Most O-level students really need to work up to the values of 128. You really don't need to go far, but you may be asked to calculate bigger binary numbers, which are actually 12-bit, 8-bit binary. We're going to talk about what are 12-bit, 8-bit binaries in just a second. Now, once the values are assigned, you have to take the values that are on. That is 1, 1, 1, and another 1. So what are the denary numbers that are assigned to the ones over here? So that is 64, 32, 16, and 1. Okay, this is actually looking like a multiplication sign. So we change it to plus. And then if we add it, so it's going to be 17, and then 17 plus 32, which is going to be 8, 9, uh, 4, then 64, 13, 1, 11. So it's 113. I hope my math's correct, but 113. So this is the number that the computer has actually stored in its binary register. Now, what does it mean when I say 8-bit binary? 8, uh, let's say, not 8, 4-bit binary. And I can also say 12 bit binary. This just refers to how many digits of binary. So an example of 4-bit binary is going to be 0011. 8-bit is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 8 digits. 12-bit is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 binary digits. So the number of binary digits. So for now, this is the only thing that we need to know about binary numbers and binary conversions. So let's go ahead and quickly give a summary of what we just learned. Number one, binary numbers are base two numbers, meaning if we need to calculate the value of a binary number, no matter how big it is, we're going to start with 2 to the power 0 and then move on to 2 to the power 4 and so on. Binary numbers can be stored in registers. So let's say this is a register 1, 0, 0, 1. So this box is known as a 4-bit register. And why is it a 4-bit? Because it 
stores a four digit binary number. And finally and lastly, let's review conversion of binary to form slash deanery. Now I will be making a very separate video about deanery because there is a lot to learn about deanery as well. So this time, let's take a 12-bit binary number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Pretty big, right? Do not worry. Let's go ahead and try to take it step by step. So first, I'm going to go ahead and definitely draw a big box. Okay, my lines are not that perfect. Anyways, so now, okay, before I go ahead and draw the markings, I'm just going to first write the binary so I can fit it. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay, I should have spaced them out a bit, but it's okay. So let's go ahead and separate these. Now during the exam, once you keep practicing, keep practicing, you will eventually do not, you, you eventually do not need to go ahead and separate these out. You should be able to just do it in your mind easily and freely. So now we will assign the values 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power 4, 5, 6, um, let's say 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Keep assigning. So what are these values? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, uh, 128, 256, 512, uh, 1024, and then what's 1024 times 2? 8, 4, 2048. So what is this denary number? We'll calculate the values that are on. These values are on, that means these will be in calculation. So you have to take them in calculation, on, on. So how many values are on? This value is on, this value is on, then this value is on, this value is on, this is on, this is on, and this is on. So the final result in denary would be 2048 plus 1024 plus 128 plus 64, 1, plus 8 plus 4, uh, plus 1. So if I go ahead and uh, do the calculation, 64, 8, um, uh, then if we do this, 128, 64, 1. The value of total comes to 3, 2, 7, 7. And this is our denary or decimal number. So this is the basics of binary number. They're base two numbers, they're stored in registers, and the amount of digits, let's say it's a four digit binary number, we're gonna say it's a four bit binary number in terms of computer language. And this is how you can calculate the binary number into denary or human readable form that we can uh, read. We're gonna talk about more of denary numbers in a separate video, but for now, just know that the values that humans can easily read, that's known as the decimal number or a human readable number. So that wraps up today's video about number systems in binary numbers. Hope that helps you, and I'll catch you up in the next video. Peace.